to finish off, I'd like to uh, show you a kind of a, a rather quirky um, way of utilizing DI, but it is something that uh, um, I think still shows off the power of, um, of what's possible to do in dependency injection. And that's going to be an EIOC3, and the folder is here, which contains a record-breaking one script. Um, this one script here, EIOC3 banana color, uh, just has this inject optional um, of this image with an ID of organic. And then stuff happens, banana enabled is true. And here we see that it's addressing the image. The image of another object which has a certain attribute. So this is still DI, right? Um, it can look, it can parse in uh, the, uh, it can parse in the hierarchy. It can have this, uh, it can have a string ID. Um, if nothing is happening, because this is an optional injection, it won't break the script. But if we display this here, press space, banana appears. Um, if I will go in and I will change this to, you know, GMO. We're getting a null reference exception because this object was expected to be there, but it is not. Um, so, like I said, this is kind of a, um, um, maybe use this for prototyping, um, maybe use it for something else, but maybe not use it at all, I never use it. Um, but I think it's a, it's a good demonstration of um, what DI actually is. I mean, you can have communication between different objects, but this is a way for this object to get bound to, uh, um, to the actual container through this binding here. So uh, let's go back to, uh, to the signals example. And I want to show a, um, an example of uh, troubleshooting Zencha. So if we go in, in um, the installer, EIOC2 installer, um, we see that this is declare signal signals banana toggle signal so in uh, if you want to use this uh, if you want to use this banana toggle signal it has to be um, bound within the installer so let's see um, you know I'm gonna go ahead and I'm, I'm gonna just forget how to do this I'm just gonna comment this out maybe something happened maybe I deleted it um, and you know I do this quite a bit I make errors all the time so I usually find tools to uh, help me not make them to foolproof myself. So, uh, uh, Zenject has uh, this concept called validation. What this means is that if there are uh, classes that are uh, referencing a uh, certain other class, which is uh, meant to be injected into them, but the class itself has not been bound, right away you'll call uh you'll get you'll get issues um because right we're getting a null reference exception it has not been bound but they're getting addressed this um while you could do this in uh just by running your scene your scene may be rather heavy so zedject often uh, offers a tool for parsing the object hierarchy to use it just go to edit zedject validate current scenes bam we're getting errors. We're getting it says uh, Zenjik exception, not a not reference exception, but this is actually just a, basically a unit test. Uh, unable to resolve banana cycle signal in listener and the same thing in caller. And here it is, the validation within Zenjik. So while I realize that this may be an initially an information overload on DI. It is not as complicated as it might first seem. Uh, overall, it is, uh, I think, an interesting topic, even outside of just using Zenjek or Strange AOC, but just as a concept altogether. Uh, tightly coupled objects, uh, such as chemical power plants or trading stocks, that require things to happen within uh, picosecond. 
um, have justification for being uh, for uh, for being tethered from one to the other. But our code does not. Manufacturing does not. And certain things they can exist um, outside of the realms of just being constantly connected. Um, our code does not exist. Uh, it, while you know, yes, sure, you know, electrons and so forth does apply uh, to the laws of thermodynamics. But um, the world that we build in the uh, the digital realm does not. Um, and Zenject, it's uh, Zenject and uh, all DI um, are uh, are will not make everything modular but they will make the objects themselves modular. So, you know, it's not a, you know, it's not a fetish. Not everything, ha uh, not everything has to be completely modular. You may look at some sort of um, input fields or texts within a certain script and um, then connect these objects to, uh, to another one. But the biggest advantage is not so much that, um, that these objects can, you know, you can swap them back and forth, but if it fails, you know where it's failed. Um, even if you're using DI with someone that doesn't understand DI, um, you know what, that's cool. Uh, just put them within that framework and if their code breaks, that's, you know, that's their code. And that's the power. You can isolate certain things and then you can say, if it broke, it broke within that code. But you won't have um, what Michael Perro called this incomprehensible complexity, meaning that it's like somehow it's okay for uh, for having uh, some sort of like weird bugs or um, it's uh, fixing one thing and other things break. Like this is uh, this can be avoided, and the way to avoid it is with DI. So there is a um, the further topics to uh, uh, cover here for sure. Um, I did want to do a talk on this um, specifically because while uh, you know there are uh, many many talks out there for just uh, describing concepts of, uh, of just programming and programming in C sharp, DI is something that is getting some traction, um, but not as much as it deserves. So. Uh, it is a way to increase uh, collaboration uh, between uh, several uh, several teams or within even several people or just within yourself and then it's also very friendly to unit tests and overall it will save you um, uh, it will save you time and nerves I promise uh, let me know uh, what you think what you'd like me to cover. Um, I think I will continue on with this topic and probably with um, interviews and further investigation. So I'm going to be continuing covering both the practical side um, and the theoretical side of Unity and also beyond uh, in, in my uh, personal and the focus of, uh, of this channel in general, extended reality. Um, but also within uh, things that might appear to be cross-pollination from other fields. Let me know what you think, and don't forget to subscribe.